arrived here in my office. It is now 9.30 in the morning and I'm about to get started with my day. It's Friday and I'm gonna bring you guys with me. Today I have a couple of things on my schedule. I'm gonna review hands that I played yesterday in my session. I will also show you guys how things have been going over the last few days as well as play a pot limit OMA session later in the day. PLO Mastermind related, I'm gonna record a new video and I also have a team meeting talking about PLO Trainer. So those are the things that are on the schedule for today. I would say let's get straight into it and catch up later. So the video that I'm right now working on is about multi-way single race pot strategy. And what I'm doing in the presentation is I'm creating a strategy for each of these three players. I'm gonna give tips and ideas on how people can improve their strategy and how these players are supposed to play. But also I'm gonna give some tips and ideas on how you can adjust your strategy from the theory if players are playing a different strategy than they should in a GTO environment. So I'm currently working on that, still not finished, but let's keep going. That was a great meeting with Alex, our CTO, and we spoke about innovations and future updates for the product. A lot of great ideas came up and uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to keep working and improving on PLO Trainer. Need to wait for about 30 minutes before I'm heading out to the masseur for a treatment on my shoulder. I'm holding a small injury at the moment due to Padel. But um, to spend some time, I'm now watching some high stakes PLO on Hustler Live with Tom Dwan in the mix and a couple of other guys as well. A lot of big pots, good action. So I'm gonna watch that for a little bit and then uh, heading out and uh, get some treatment for my shoulder. Okay, so that was really good. Feels great for my arm, hope it's gonna help my injury. Um, I'm gonna get back to the office now, just had some lunch. I'm gonna still shoot that video for the mastermind, haven't done that yet, or at least haven't finished it. Uh, and then we're gonna look into some hands, guys, to see how things have been going recently. So let's get out of here, get a coffee for on the way, and then head to the office. How is it going, guys? And welcome back to a new episode for the PLO Mastermind. So what you see in front of you is different board textures with their leading frequency attached to it. So equity plays a huge role here and preflop range interaction to the board texture as well. On this texture we can see in the equity distribution graph on the right side. Okay, that's a wrap up for this video. Let's render it, finish it up and then upload it. Before jumping into some actual hands that I played over the last few days, this is how things have been going recently. This is all the hands from June 1st, basically. You can see that overall it's going really well. I'm up around $6,000. There's also a little bit of rake back coming on top of that. So very happy with the results so far. If we look into how things have been going since I uploaded my latest vlog, which was on July 14th, I played 4,300 hands, winning $3,200. Definitely running well this week. Look into this. EV is close to $1,000 and I'm actually up $3,000. Now let's have a look into some of the hands that I played this week to see how I actually managed to build this graph. In this hand, I open raise on the button, ace, four, four, deuce with the not suit, pretty standard. And against a three bet, I am going to call. We have some connection, we get the not suit, so pretty straightforward so far. My opponent checks on the flop, and on this flop, I think I can check or bet. I'm leaning a little bit more towards betting, because I believe in general, people don't check raise enough. And they overfold slightly versus stab, so I like batting a bit more, but I wouldn't mind a check here, to be honest. 
Now against the check race, I am going to make a call. On the turn, I pick up a wrap. So very, very easy stack off here. And uh, luckily I do take this one down because I river the nut flush. I do like how my opponent played this hand, checking in order to check raise. Well played by my opponent. This is a four bet pot. I open raise very standard. And against a button three bet, this is one of those hand classes that is a candidate to four bet bluff sort of to make sure that you have some other hands in your four betting range than only aces or ace king king. So I do four bet. My opponent is definitely capable of three bet folding, especially this player. I pot it on this flop and luckily my opponent ends up folding and I take down a nice pot. I decide to three bet my hand pre flop. This is a little bit too loose. Against a wider opening range, this would be fine, but in theory, my hand is not a three bet against an MP open. Now on the flop, I decide to bet and then call against a check raise. I don't think I want to get it in right away on the flop. My hand is obviously too strong to bet fold. I think on the flop, I could also pot. Great turn, turning top to pair, and I get it in against a pair and a flush draw, and I take this pot down. Now the idea of betting and then calling against the check raise instead of stacking off on the flop straight away is because you can fold on some of the hard turns instead of committing then. And other than that, you're just always going to stack off on the turn. This is one of the bigger pots that I played over the last few days. I three bet very standard with my double suited aces. The small blind surprisingly over calls and the initial raiser also makes a call. Now on this board, my opponent, who is the initial open raiser, decides to lead out. And I think calling here is pretty good. We're still somewhat deep. And my opponent can easily have kings or tens or king ten. And on top of that, I incentivize the small blind to continue with suits that I'm dominating. Now on this turn, I turn an additional gutter. My opponent pots. There's nothing else really that I can do, I think, than just get the money in at this point. Hoping my opponent is not holding kings or tens, basically. So I'm stacking off. My opponent gets the money in, of course. And I'm up against top pair and a gutter and a spade blocker. And I'm running good. Or, I mean, I was a favorite anyway. But I take down this big pot. Following hand, I open raise on the button. We're pretty deep. And the small blind is going to 3-bet against me. So we're playing a 200 big blind. 3-bet pot in position as the caller because I'm obviously going nowhere. I flop top and bottom pair backdoor flush draw against a half pot size bet. Very straightforward call. It's not a hand you want to raise. It's too medium strong in a sense to raise and then potentially face a re-raise. Against a double barrel, I think I have one of the best hands to raise as a bluff with. I'm blocking king-king, 3-3. And on top of that, I would play King King very similar like this, calling the flop and then raising the turn. And since I'm having the best blockers plus a little bit of equity, I like my turn raise. Unfortunately, my opponent doesn't go anywhere. He makes the call, leads out on the river ace, and I'm losing quite a big pot here against the small blind. Finally, let's look into a three bet pot where we are playing pretty deep, or at least over 150 big blinds. And I flop an over pair and an open ended straight draw. My opponent checks. I decide to go 31 into 51. And in hindsight, I would like to see myself betting a little bit bigger. Just charge my opponent more if he has like a pair and a gutter, which he's not going to fold on the flop. I'm heavily dominating that part of his range. So let's build a pot. This time my opponent check raise is small and I just get it in. Like my hand is definitely strong enough to bet and get it in at this point. There are still enough either two pair hands or pair plus reps, pair plus open ended straight roll hands that my opponent can check raise that I'm doing really well against. So let's just get it in. Luckily I run good in this hand as you guys can see, rivering the nut straight. And we do take down this big pop. Okay guys, it's now a little bit over 8 p.m. and I'm about to get back to the office to play some Pot Limit Oma. Now I just had like about a two hour break.
dinner, shower, went to the groceries, bought some drinks, some food for my session. And now I feel energized and ready to get back after it again. Now before jumping into the tables, I am gonna do a short meditation session. Not something I do every single day, I do it whenever I feel like it. But right now, after a, uh, after a long day of work basically, I need some time for myself and prepare myself to get ready for grinding. So that's what I'm gonna do. Get to the office, meditate and then play some piano. Welcome to the Daily Calm. I'm Tamara Levitt. And today, we'll be talking about the beauty of non-doing. Start by taking a comfortable position on a cushion or chair. That was great, feel much better now. Let's get into the action and crush those PLO 200 streets. 